When learning a new language, it's always important to set up your development environment correctly, because if you don't, you're going to be fighting with the headaches that come from an incorrect installation. Now, Microsoft really makes it easy for developers to get started with the .NET framework, and that is what we are targeting because we are learning C Sharp. .NET is pretty much it for us. But uh, Microsoft makes their own development tools, and in fact, Visual Studio, which is their development tool, is probably the best development environment that you are going to find. Now, of course, the full-blown versions are paid for, so unless if you want to get into C-Sharp development professionally, or if you want to be a serious hobbyist, then I would recommend that you get the... Uh, full-blown version of Visual Studio, Visual Studio Professional or above. If you're a student, there's the DreamSpark program, which you can sign up for and get Microsoft software for free. Visual Studio is one of those. Uh, there's also another program called Website Spark. I don't really remember all the details, and it's not really free, but you can sign up for free. But over the course of three years, I think you have to pay for the software, something like that. It's deferred, but, you know, it... it if you don't mind deferred payment for it, then, you know, the website Spark would be something that you might be interested in. But for, you know, people that just want to learn the language or just want to dabble or even just be a hobbyist but not necessarily a serious hobbyist, Microsoft makes Express editions of Visual Studio available. They are trimmed down versions of Visual Studio, but they are Visual Studio nonetheless. And if you go to Microsoft.com slash Express then you will see what they list. Now they have, uh, hello, it would help if I would type Express correctly. Uh, there are really three different types of Express. There's Visual Studio Express, there's SQL Server Express, and then there's Visual Studio Light Switch. I'm not necessarily sure what Light Switch is. I haven't really paid that much attention to it, so uh, we're not even going to worry about that. SQL Server Express is a trimmed down version of SQL Server. So if you want to develop database driven uh, websites or applications, you can download SQL Server and basically write your application against that and then later deploy against a full blown version of SQL Server if you want it. But we're interested in Visual Studio and we're going to click on this get free Visual Studio Express products and there are multiple versions available to us as this slowly pulls up here we go we have visual studio 2010 express for windows phone we don't want that there's visual web developer express that's primarily for web development but you can write web applications using c sharp and vb but of course it is geared for uh, web development which if you're interested in you will eventually want to get that little application there's also Visual Basic 2010 Express, which is for Visual Basic. There is Visual C Sharp, which is what we are going to download for this course. There's C++, and then there's ISO images. Uh, these are web installers, so you basically download the installer, and then the installer downloads everything that it needs to. So we are going to use Visual C Sharp 2010 Express. This is .NET 4, and this is the latest uh, released version of the .NET framework, 2010 and .NET 4. Uh, maybe in 2012 we will see uh, a newer version of .NET, .NET 4.5, with uh, Visual Studio, well, we don't know what it's going to be called yet. Um, it should be released around the time that Windows 8 comes out. I would be surprised if it came out before then. Uh, but we're kind of looking at uh, close to the end of the year 2012 before we see a new version of Visual Studio and the .NET Framework. Now, I'm just going to click on this install now, and it's going to ask, well, if you're going to try this, you know, you can download Visual Studio 2010 Professional and try it for 30 days, or, or maybe it's 90 days. Hey, it's 90 days, three months. So if you wanted to give it a try, feel free to do that, but I'm just going to install Visual C Sharp 2010 Express. And from here on out, I'm just going to call it Visual Studio, because that's a whole lot easier to say than Visual C Sharp 2010 Express. And I'm just going to click Run, and then this is going to download the installer, 
and then I will be able to install the app from here. Now this is an almost fresh install of Windows 7. It has uh, Service Pack 1. It also has all the updates. There are a few modifications I've made, mainly to the taskbar to get rid of the clock and notifications and things like that. But for the most part, this is a base install of Windows 7. So um, there's nothing special installed on this machine. I'm going to go ahead and close Internet Explorer. If you want to help improve setup, you know, click yes, yeah, whatever. And then we have read the license term, even though we haven't. I don't know anybody who does. Now we could install Microsoft Silverlight and SQL Server 2008 Express. And I'm not going to, we're not going to use it. And then I'm just going to do install. Now this is going to take a little bit. Uh, I want to say about 10 to 15 minutes on a good connection. Uh, so uh, through the magic of editing, this will only take about a, a second or two. And um, if you want to keep watching, we are going to talk about you know the user interface, user interface to get uh, familiar with that. Otherwise, you can just wait until it's installed, and then we can go through the user interface together. It's completely up to you. All right, so we have Visual Studio installed. Let's run it. And the first thing we are going to see is this start page. And it offers some latest news about the .NET Framework or Visual Studio. Or since this is Visual C Sharp, we would also probably probably see some C Sharp things here as well. But the thing that I like about the start page is this recent project section. Because anytime we create or open a project, it's going to be listed under this recent projects. And the list is uh, 5, 7, 10 projects long, I don't really remember. But um, if there is a project that you're in quite often, or multiple projects that you're in, you can have quick and easy access to those projects because they will be listed under here, and we can just click on the link that it generates. We don't have to go to File, Open, or anything like that. And of course, you could turn off the Start Page by just going to Show Page on Startup and unchecking that, and then the Start Page will never come back up again. So let's click on new project and we are going to create a console application and the reason being because we are going to write code and then we want to see the results of that code and we're not going to be delving into uh, the Windows API anything like that we just want to focus on C sharp and using a console application we will be able to just do that now of course we are going to have to uh, learn just a little bit about the console application API, but um, it, it's just easier and it's faster to execute. So that's why we're going th with the console application. Uh, something else of note is the class library project. Uh, this is a project that allows you to write code and it compiles into a DLL. And then you can use that DLL in any of your projects. So if you have what... Uh, many developers call a core class library, which is code that we personally use throughout all of our projects. If you have code that you find yourself reusing over and over and over again, you can put that into a class library and then add a reference to that library in your projects, and then you have that uh, code already available to you. And one of the great things about the .NET framework is that you can write a class library in C Sharp, and then you can turn around and use that library in a Visual Basic application. It's uh, really nice and flexible that way. The other projects, uh, you know, there's Windows Forms and WPF applications. These are Windows applications that you can write. Uh, the difference between the two is that the Windows Forms uses the old GDI Plus technology. The WPF, which stands for Windows Presentation Foundation, is the newer user interface uh, API that Microsoft kind of pushed, but uh, I don't think they really succeeded in doing that. Of course, you can write richer applications with WPF, but uh, there are some glaring problems with that that Microsoft just hasn't seemed to touch and fix. But all that might be moot anyway, because you know, WPF, I think, is going to go out the window. Um, not necessarily with Windows 8 or Windows 9, or probably not even Windows 10, because Microsoft tends to uh, favor backwards compatibility. 
but eventually I think we would see WPF go away because of some of the, of the technology that's being introduced with Windows 8 and will be uh, expanded upon in future versions of Windows. So we are going to create a console application. We are going to give it a name, or at least I am, of my first project. And then I'll hit enter. And this is what we'll see anytime you create a console application. These projects are based upon templates. And so anytime you create any type of these applications, it's going to look at that template and then generate the necessary files and things like that. Uh, before I do anything though, I like line numbers and you might not, but if you do and you want line numbers, you will go to tools and then options. And then you'll need to check this show all settings because it's hidden for some reason. Yeah, I would think that developers would like line numbers and that should be default, but yeah, you know, they didn't ask me. You will go to text editor and expand it. And then, uh, you know, depending upon your version of Visual Studio, you can have just a few languages listed here, like what we see here. Or if you have Visual Studio Professional, you will see a ton of languages. And you can actually turn on or off line numbers based upon the language that um, that you have open at that particular time. So if we wanted to only have line numbers for C Sharp, we could do that. And then uh, XML or XAML uh, or SQL or anything like that would not have line numbers. But I like line numbers in all of my code, so I'm going to choose all languages, click on line numbers to check that box, and then OK, and then voila, you have line numbers. Something else, I am going to change the zoom to 125%. This is just for recording purposes, just so that you can see the text on the screen a little bit easier than at its 100%. Uh, but you, this is, you know, something if you don't want to have that small of a text, you can change the font size or you can change the zoom size of the text and it only affects the text. So that's also a nice little handy thing. Over on the right hand side is the Solution Explorer. Visual Studio uses the idea of solutions and projects. The solution is kind of the overall solution. In this case, it's an application, a console application. And then the projects are the little pieces of that application. So for example, right now we only have one project called My First Project, and this is the project that contains the code for the application. But we could add another project to the solution, like a class library, like a core class library. And then we could add a reference to that core class library in our console app. And then whenever we uh, built our solution, it would build the core class library first, and then it would build the console application second, because they are both pieces of the solution and one piece depended upon another piece so it would build those in order that we needed it to build so you can think of the solution as the overall solution the overall application that we are building and then the project as each individual piece of that particular application and it is kind of representative of the file system if we were to save this project in fact let's go ahead and do this uh, there is not, let's select the project, save my first project, there we go. Uh, we are going to be given the chance to give it a name and give it a location and then the solution name and I'm just going to leave all of these default and then save and if we go to documents, Visual Studio 2010, projects, we will see the folder for this particular solution. And then as we added projects, the the individual projects would be listed inside of this folder here. Now, if we look inside of the project folder for my first project, which is the one selected here, we can see that we have my first project, which is the project, and then program.cs which is the file here. And as we add files, let's add another. And I'm just right clicking on the project, add, and then I want to add another class. And then I'll just leave this as default, add. And it added another .cs file called class1.cs. If we went to 
our project folder, we would see that that folder or that file was added there. So it's kind of representative of the file system. Uh, any folders or files that we add to the project are going to be listed as is uh, on the file system as it is in the project. We can create folders, you know, new folder and things like that. But let's go ahead and delete this because I want to leave everything kind of pristine so that whenever we start running code, um, it'll just be, you know, basic default code. Now, of course, we'll start adding other files and other folders later on, but for the most part, I just want to keep this as simple as possible going into lesson two, where we will actually write our first bit of C-sharp code. But before we end this lesson, let's close out of Visual Studio. Now, we are being prompted to save this, and that's because we did add an extra file and a folder to the project, and it's recognized that there was a change. Even though that we did delete those files, it recognizes that there was a change, and it's asking if we want to save. So we'll just do yes. Let's go back and start Visual Studio again. And then we will see the My First Project is listed under Recent Projects. So if we click that, it'll take us back to right where we left off. Uh, in fact, let's add another file. And I've put the cursor, let's even add a few lines. If you notice over here on the gutter of the file here, Next to the file numbers, you'll see this bar change colors, and that's representative of the changes that you, you have made since opening this file. So the green means that these changes have been saved, and the yellow means that those changes have not been saved. And if we were to close this file and open it back up again, the green or yellow isn't there because the file has been saved and there's been no changes. So if we make some more changes, we get the yellow, save it, we get the green. Now I'm going to put the cursor somewhere in the middle here, and then I'm going to close Visual Studio again. Yes, we want to save. Let's go back. I'm going to pin this to the taskbar just to make it a little easier to run. We'll get started. Click on my first project, and we'll see that class1.cs is open and our cursor is right in the middle. Now, of course, we put the cursor about right here and it put it at the beginning of the line, but it remembers where you were the last time you had the project open. So whenever you open it again, it's kind of like starting back where you left off, which is a really nice feature. And something else too, if you're not familiar with Windows 7, there are jump lists, you know, you right click on the uh, icon and then if the program is specified or programmed to use jump lists, then there will be a jump list. And the jump list for Visual C Sharp Express is to list the recent projects. So you don't even have to open Visual Studio and then click on recent projects. You can just right click my first project and then it'll open that project for you but I did lose the zoom for some reason, so I'll set that back. And that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to write some C-sharp code, so I'm looking forward to that, and I hope you are too, and we will get started with that tomorrow.